Hi, I'm Rob Daly of the 405th, and I've been asked to show you guys how I do my digital camo paint job, and this is how I'm going to do it. Hi, so this is the first way I originally first started doing a lot of my digital painting. I got some stencil blanks from any craft store. I got one on five, you know, just a regular old you know, digital pattern cloth, you know, it's just a little handkerchief. And literally, I just took this, put it right over it, took a sharpie, and traced and traced, and traced. After I got them tracing all that, took a uh, X-Acto knife and cut these pieces out. And then from there, I then traced, and traced, and traced onto some paper, uh, paper tape. Now the paper tape works well, and it's very cheap, comparatively. But the problem with it is you get a lot of fuzzy lines, and you don't get a very crisp and clean edge to it. So. I, I, got, I got away from it. It's too many tracing steps and it really was just uh, you know, very onerous. So this is the way that I now do my digital camo pattern. And I also, the way I did a couple of the other uh, insignias. I got original Frisket film, which I had never heard of before, but when I went over to Blick Art Store, they talked to me about it, told me about it, it was fantastic. It's a low tack film that already has a grid on it and uh, it allows you to print onto the actual piece of paper and uh, gives you your stenciling right there on the spot. So you just need to cut the pieces out. And then it, as you peel it apart, it gives you a nice little clean sticker that you can then place onto your pieces. So the only problem I have is that uh, it comes in two different versions. One's in sheets, the other's in rolls. Uh, the catch is, uh, these sheets are a little too big for my printer. So I have to cut it down so that way it's the same shot uh, size to fit in there. So that's what I'm about to do now. Okay, everyone. So I've already cut the piece of paper down. Uh, this is the Frisket uh, sheet, and uh, I went onto the internet and got myself a, a digital camo pattern that has four distinctive colors to it. So that way, when you go to cut it out, you get multiple different patterns out of one go. If you go with just black and white or any of the other colors, you use up a lot of ink, and it gets to be kind of a pain, uh, pain in the ass. So uh, I just went and opened up uh, just regular old paint, you know, just nothing crazy, and took the image and uh, I went to Print Preview. Now when you go into Print Preview, it allows you to see how much the paper is gonna end up taking it, all right? That's the main thing. Sometimes it may print out a little like, you know, 200 by 200 pixel, you know, type, uh, you know, image. Not really ideal because you don't wanna waste this, waste this paper. So you stretch the image, that way it fits the entire thing, and then you print it out, and then you're good to go. Once you have yourself all printed out, and you're back at your table. What you need to do is you have all the, the white border space that you obviously don't want to waste. So you just take a regular pen and as you find uh, each color piece along the edges, you can either do one of two things. You can either just draw just a regular straight line and because the gridding, it allows you to help try to keep your lines straight and do that all the way around. Or you can try to get all fancy and go like, you know, 93 turns in and out, you know, draw a little box inside, so on and so forth all the way around the entire uh, piece. Once you get done doing that, and you've eaten away at it, the best way to cut this that I found, especially with you know, some regular X-Acto knife, is uh, just drawing in one direction. Okay, and what that basically means is, every single color you see, you just draw individually in one direction. A lot of people want to get you know fancy and cut in multiple directions without moving themselves around like you know they want to cut sideways and do this that and the other thing and catch curves don't do that you want to replicate the same cut every single time no matter what's going on so everyone can hopefully just do that repeatedly in one spot every single time that helps you get the absolute 90 degree turns for everything so you move this around then you go ahead and catch the next piece and that's all you need to do it is just that simple and just that easy until you get the entire piece pulled out. Okay. okay, so now that we got everything all set and ready to go, uh, there's two different materials that you're probably going to be doing this on. One is the Papakura hardened reinforced uh, version and the other one is foam. Right here we have two thighs that are reinforced with Fondo, Rondo, resin, and glue. So. Uh, you know, they're all nice and hard, they're good to go. Now, you can go ahead and prime with regular black, and then stick a couple pieces on. Go with gray, 
stick a couple pieces on, go with white, and that's it. And then you can go ahead and tape to do your accent color, which happens to be red for my gear. And then after that, you can go ahead and do the, uh, I use this uh, gloss uh, varnish finish. And then from there, you can peel everything off. It's like unwrapping a Christmas present, and I'll show you that in another clip. But that's what you need to do. For, and this is what the kind of painting you need to be able to replicate that on Pepper Curl. Now, the other way you can do it is when you have foam. Uh, foam is a little bit temperamental with spray paint because it absorbs a lot of the color and it's very porous, so you want to try and clog those pores with, you guessed it, plastic dip. You usually get this from Lowe's, Home Depot, and things of that nature. It's about six bucks. Uh, it's worth it. It's very much worth it. This it happens to be black, so you don't really need the black spray paint. You can if you want, if you don't like the color of the, like the, color of the black, but it's a very good way to prime. Once you get done doing that, you rinse and repeat. Uh, you go ahead and stick a bunch of stickers on, then you spray paint gray, and so on and so forth all the way down the line. I'll actually show you a couple videos of that as I go through. Okay, now, regardless of how good you are doing either paper tape or using the frisket paper, you're going to have a little bit of places where you do need to do some touch-up. It's just the, the way it is. So the way I do that is I use the Citadel paint if you do Warhammer 40K or any of that kind of stuff. It's uh, their paint scheme. Uh, black, gray, uh, skull white, and blood red. Happens to be exactly the right hue and color for all of my scheme. So I take a, a number two flat uh, bristle brush and I go ahead and have that and the square tip of it allows me to keep the digital pattern without having too many uh, pick up or screw ups. And then from there I do my detail work and it's very minimal stuff, just like some of the curves sometimes. No matter how well you try to stick it on there, it's going to do what it's going to do. But the good news is, the fact you're doing digital camo paint means it covers up a lot of screw ups because it's camo. It's supposed to cover things up. So that's the good news. So you don't have to get too, uh, too terribly crazy with the details. Okay, so you can see from here that I've already sliced up a large section of the page, and this is basically where you're going to be having. Uh, from there, I've already put a whole bunch on here, try to keep them to very large digital patterns for the larger flat sections. And the main point to doing the digital camo to begin with is to break up lines, which basically is like the edging of everything. So, like. Uh, why do you? Uh, why can you figure out uh, like a human body shape from uh, half a mile away? Because you see the, you know, this circular head. You see the shoulders. You see arms and all that kind of stuff. So when you do a digital pattern, you want to break up that line so it becomes fuzzy between that. So where you place these, you're trying to break up hard lines. All right. So because I put it on the frisket paper and I got this all nicely cut out and it looks all nice and detailed. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of work to be able to split this. Except I want to be recorded and then it wants to take its time. <laughs> but uh, we can also take the X Acto knife and peel it apart too. There we go. And you have yourself a very nice little clean sticker that you can then place appropriately. Now, uh, I have a nice flat section right here. I don't know if you can see with the reflection or not, but the way you want to orient the actual piece itself is you want to keep it perpendicular to the ground, okay? So whichever way the piece is going to be sitting on you to uh, the ground is how you want to place it. So if it's facing like this and that's how you're going to wear it, that's how that needs to go back on. Uh, and once you get one or two pieces on, it's going to be real easy because when you go to place it, you then just need to keep it square to all the other pieces. All right? Now, trying to get it up and over too many corners is not a good idea. But for this one right here, have a nice section, keep it nice and flat, and just quick, simple, and easy. Put it on just like if you're a kid with a uh, sticker book, and you slap it right on there, and it's good. Uh, if for whatever reason you get it on there and it doesn't look quite right, or if it's off-centered or turned or something, it peels right off. Not an issue, not a problem. It's still tacky enough to do exactly what you need to do. I wouldn't do it more than once or twice. Uh, I've done a couple of these just because, you know, uh, sometimes I find better shapes and it just looks better in certain locations. But that's as hard as it's going to get. And you do this once for the black uh, or for your first primary color. 
you want to do as many as you can and it's going to look really busy. It's going to look like you have a lot. And then you do the next color and you do just, you just fill in the spaces in between and you're going to have significantly less. Other than that, it doesn't get any more difficult than that. Okay everyone, so after you get done spray painting it all, then you get to unwrap your present, you basically just peel all the squares off and you get to rip them all off. Uh, the way you can do that is either with a regular old X-Acto knife or with a pair of Neumos tweezers, that works out pretty well. And then from there, after you get done ripping them all off, or removing them very gently, uh, assuming you haven't put too much paint over each individual layer, uh, all you need to do is varnish it. And then after you get done putting a nice coat of varnish on it, and it dries for 24 hours after that, then you get to use your regular old you know, paper tape, and then you tape off whatever accent colors you want, and then from there spray paint it, take it off, and you're done. Uh, the one thing I did in addition to is I cut out some of the thin foamy, and the uh, cut the patterns out and then attach them after the entire piece is already done because it's black and you don't need to spray paint it black anyway. So uh, other than that, that's how I basically did every single one of these pieces for the digital camo pattern. Um, I sincerely hope that helps. Okay everyone. So uh, after you get done with enough patience and time, this is what an entire suit of digital camo pattern looks like. And I wish you nothing but the best of luck with your build. Have a good day.